Well, good evening again, and welcome to ACAP. My name is Jeff Buffo, and I've been a licensed realtor with Keller Williams for 23 years. And along with my partner, Jan Hare, we founded Seasons for Life. Seasons for Life is a real estate team with over 50 years of serving the greater Atlanta community. And in addition to providing unparalleled real estate services, we provide turnkey services to families to help simplify the complexity of senior care by connecting you guys with our compassionate care partners from in-home care, home restoration, hospice care, et cetera. We wanna make the journey of senior care much simpler. Yeah, and then uh, my name is Christian Christina. So my wife and I own in-home care uh, for comfort care. So we are non-medical uh, in-home care. We serve the coffee and charity area. I'm also a co-founder and co-coordinator for the HR coffee job. Certainly aging in place is a huge component of senior care. And tonight we're gonna explore the reasons why, the benefits and challenges of and the resources, most importantly, that are available for this important issue. So what is aging in place? Aging in place is the ability to live in one's home and community safely, independently, and comfortably, comfortably, regardless of age, income, or ability level. And when thinking about aging in place, we need to take a step back and ask the question, why would a senior even consider aging in place? Well, home is where the heart is. For most seniors, their entire life has revolved around home, family, community. You know, these incredible life events of getting married, uh, the birth of their children, taking family vacations, celebrating high school and uh, college graduations, taking care of grandchildren, sharing fun times with their family, their friends, their community, and taking care of their home. It's the place where they've created lasting memories. And I like to say aging in place, it's receiving the care that you need in the home that you love. Um, as we move forward, think about two fundamental emotions that most seniors really have in their head and their heart, and that is independence and pride. Let's look, let's look at some of the statistics regarding aging in place. And I really wanna highlight three very important ones. First is that 90% of all seniors would prefer to live at home than to go to a community, okay? 60% of seniors have an emotional attachment to their home as we just talked about. And 40% of seniors said that independence is the most important benefit of staying at home. Okay. So the top reasons uh, active adults want to age in place, number one, to be independent, okay? Maintaining a sense of independence and pride is essential for seniors. It enables older adults to retain a high level of control over their daily lives. It allows them to execute daily functions like shopping, their hobbies. It allows for connecting with their community, their friends, and their family um, much, much easier than living in a community. It allows them to manage their personal care without constant assistance, it's that independence. Remaining in their communities enables older adults to make social interaction an intense and incredibly important part of their daily lives. Having an active adult uh, social life can help older adults um, prevent dementia, maintain community connections and important friendships, and contribute to their better health overall. They feel safer in their neighborhood, in their community, in their home. It's the place of comfort. And cost is another major factor. Even after home modifications, and I think everybody's gotten their their checklist, which is pretty comprehensive. Even after home modifications, it is still cheaper to age in place than to move into a community. And I've visited over a dozen in the last month or two. 
and it can range from 60 to over $150,000 per year. Health and safety is paramount. And I just wanna talk a minute about the pandemic, COVID-19 and its effect on seniors. 20% of seniors reported financial hardship during and after COVID. COVID made seniors more willing to live at home rather than moving. And more seniors started using technology for daily activities, for social connection, for ordering food and things like that. And on Tuesday, I met a, co a company and they provide training for seniors. And we'd be happy to uh, provide information on that, but I probably need to call them too because I'm not really good at IT either. Um, but moving to a community increased the likelihood of exposure to sickness and illness. So staying at home is definitely um, the preference. So now we wanna take a look at the challenges of aging in place and I'll turn it over to Christian. Thank you, Jerry. There you go. So a couple of things um, as we go through the challenges and then also some of the strategies, um, there's gonna be a lot of information on the stage. And so if you wanna take pictures, please you know, wait until the slides ends and then take pictures if you want to. And then I'd like to make this more um, very relaxing. So if you have any questions, just raise your hand. We don't have to wait until the end of it. I know we have notes in there. So if you wanna, you feel shy, you wanna take your questions on the note, that's fine too. Um, so, you know, Jeff is right. I think if you if you look what Jeff's presentation is, it's all about, you know, all these seniors have that great emotions, emotional attachment to their homes, right? And that's one of the things why they wanna also age in place. Um, but certainly, you probably know this. Let me, let me ask you questions. Who actually have parents living independently now at home? Wow, okay. Okay, yeah, so there's certainly a lot of challenges. I mean, you probably, a lot of you are probably more, you know, more knowledgeable than we are here because you are living it. But um, the first is the home. This, this, this statistics doesn't make sense to me. 90% of older adults want to live at home independently but 70% of them live in the homes that have, that were built three decades ago, right? When your home was built in, and because I'm Asian, I'm not good at math. I'm trying to think 30 <laughs> minus 20, 24, but you know, somewhere there, but if you, exactly, thank you so much. Yeah, um, so exactly. So if, if your homes were 30 years ago, there must be a lot of things that were challenging when you're 80, 90, even 65, 70 years old. So, so let's, let's see what those are floors, right? You've got three stories home. You've got your main ba bedroom is on the top floor. You've got basement. You've got no ramps when you go in and out. Um, some of the steps are steep. I've seen some of the basement steps that are so steep that I, I have to hold on to the rails all the time. Bathrooms. Most bathrooms have tubs. And it's hard for older adults to get in and out of that. Some of the fixtures are non-ADA, American Disability Act, right? So the, the toilets are probably too, too, um, too low for them. Smaller doors and hallways, as they're using medical device equipment or assistive devices, they can't go through some of the hallways. Some of the doors are really small too. Carpeting. You know, I used to work for a carpet company and I, I used to think that thick carpet were luxurious, but when you have wheelchair or walker, those carpets are hindrance because you can't roll things through carpets like that. That's why most carpets in corporation or, or offices were very thin it's because it's easier to roll things. But in homes at that stage, thick, thick carpets. And then the other thing too is uneven flooring. So when you go from one area, let's say carpet to a kitchen, you may not have a good transition area so that it's, again, it becomes a fall risk because you can stumble into that. Kitchen, some of the appliances are old, right? It may not work properly anymore. Um, and then the cabinets are tall. And you know, when you spend your life 30 years, you probably put a lot of stuff on top and then you can reach them. And of course they, you know, sometimes they want to take the step tools that they could fall. So a lot of really um, fall risk. Lighting. So a lot of the, the houses were built without really nice, you know, lo lots of lights or windows, natural lights. And so they're really dark, especially the hallways, you know, especially also the hallways from their bedroom to their bathroom, right? Especially at night. 
older furniture. Um, you know, I, you know, we, we moved so many times, so we threw away a lot of furniture. So that's good. So if you want to, you know, reduce furniture, just move. Um, but when you live in the same place for 30 years, you're going to end up having a lot of furniture. And furniture is also just like the small hallways. How are you going to maneuver through it, right? Overcrowded areas. Order situation. I have a client where when I knock on the door, she opened the door, I could see pathways. Pathways going through. If the pathways connect from her main main entrance to her living room, to her, you know, to, to the guest bathroom, to her bedroom. But then after that, it's all piles of just things that she collected over 30, 40 years. I mean, you can't live like that. And she was in a scooter. So she had to park the scooter outside and she had to walk with her thing through the path. And I'm like, it's just, it's crazy. Um, pets. So I have to say pets is... It's really beneficial for older adults, especially as they have dementia, right? Because it's a great companion. But as you can see, pets can also be dangerous, right? Think about the, the water bowl spilling. Think about the toys all over the floors. Think about those beautiful dog that's really aggressive. And then when you have the leash, it goes around you and then, you know, you can fall, right? So, so pets, even though they're really useful, they can be fall hazard. And then as you live 30 years in your, in your home, what about the surrounding areas? Do they still have a good sidewalks? Do they still have a good proximity to, you know, grocery stores, things like that? Is the area safe? So, you know, as you know, people, you know, especially as you get older, you want to keep active and you like to go outside. So you need to also think about that, not only the home, but proximity of the home. What about health condition and medication? So one of the things that, one of the greatest costs of falls is over medicated or under medicated, right? And as you grow older, you may not remember to take medication. You may not remember what medication you want to take. If you take more than five medication, that is a sign that you may have a, a high fall risk. And then how do you administer them? Let's say you have insulin, right? Things like that. How do you, you know, wound care? How do you medicate yourself when you have a wound care? So as you get older, those are going to be an issue. Nutrition meals and hydration. Do they still know how to cook? Can they get groceries, right? Do they know, if they know the, how to cook, do they know, you know, how to cook nutritional foods, right? Not just ramen noodles, like, like when I used to eat when I was in college, uh, right? Hydration, do they take enough water? Do they, you know, I have a, I have a client where um, all he drank was one cup of coffee in the morning and one glass of wine at night. And then, but then he took his medication. He had seven medication and he's a follower, right? So it's, it's really hard. Uh, chronic diseases, when you have COPD, when you have, um, you know, high blood pressure, how do you manage that when, when you live by yourself? Falls. Falls is in the top three of um, hospitalization for older adults. And falls can always, always be the start of the dominant effect of that progression, right? And so managing and reducing the risk of falls is key as you live independently. Dementia, especially when they are in that late stage of the you know, beginning stage to the middle stage, when they start to forget things, when they go to, the, to their mailbox to get their mail, they turn back and they don't recognize the home. They think that's not their home. They're trying to find home, they're eloping, right? That, that, that is real, and that happens a lot, especially when they're independent. What about transportation and socialization? You know, at, at, some, point in, at some point in time, <clears throat> the ability to drive for them will probably diminish, right? But when that happens, they're, they're going to get more isolation because they're going to stay at home a lot. And you know COVID, we talk about COVID. The thing that we, we set to protect older adults, which is isolation, actually, I think it did more harm to the older adults than the COVID itself. Because after the COVID ends, the progression of older adults, this just the acuity level when, when I saw them in you know communities and when we visited them is a lot worse because of isolation. We we used to have a client too where she was actually she taught um canesta carts and fitness at one of the top senior service center and COVID hit she couldn't do that anymore and she declined very hard and she then she de developed some some sort of dementia i think it was alzheimer and then she declined rapidly after that but before covid she was every single day she was in that senior center doing stuff 
How about transportation, doctor's appointment, right? What about grocery shopping? What about the hair appointment? All of those things, as they don't, they can't drive anymore. Those will become a problem. Early dementia also causes self isolation. A lot of people that actually develop dementia and they know about it, they will self isolate themselves because they are embarrassed if people know about it, and that's also, uh, you know, one one of the fear factor, you know, with with socialization or lack of it. So I know that those are a lot of scary stuff, right? What what can we do about it? Okay, so we're gonna discuss some of that right now. So for the home, you know, talk to talk to one-on-one -on -one mobility um, because they can really help you. If you don't know what needs to be done, get with somebody who actually has the expert to it. So like home accessory specialist, home modification company. Now, what we gave you is probably the, the most comprehensive safety check out there, the 16 pages there. But it's for a reason. I, I know it was probably created in the, in the 80s, but it covered every single room. And I want you to make a copy first. Don't use that because you may need it again next time. But you want to always get to one room and do that. Go to the next room, do another safety check, right? I think it's important to you for you as you're planning now. Durable med equipment will be helpful, especially if mobility is now in effect. And I know that some some durable or some DMEs may be covered by Medicare, but if not, there's two two types. Look for rentals. There are medical equipment supply store that actually rent things before you buy it, right? So there's an option. Not, not all of them are for rent, but there are some expensive one that can be rented. I know that we rented one for our client, which is the uh, stand to stand to lift or lift to stand uh, devices. It was for rent. Um, and, and that was really beneficial. And I think it's now it's helping the client or look for secondhand like refurbished. So Fordac is a good example. So they actually uh, collect used, lightly used uh, medical equipment and then they then refurbish them and then re they resell them, resell them. So look for those type of um, stores. Home renovations, right? So look for contractors that can actually help you with this type of things. Uh, my, my, um suggestions always plan ahead okay so so there are a few things like usually there are three phases of planning one is just for fall risk so one is you need to make sure that the risk of falls are minimized at home and we'll talk about that on the next slide second would be the entryway right and and modifying the furnitures because if you can understand you can you know once they are their mobility is affected they're going to use medical device equipment or assistive device, you need bigger hallway, you need bigger door, you need ramps, um, you'll need um, your furnitures to be modified so that they can go around. So that, those are the, that's the second one. Third is probably the most, the bigger renovation. That would be your walk-in uh, walk shower, right? Uh, maybe sit down, um, sit down counter for a food prep or food uh, making, making meals and stuff like that. Those are probably going to be the more expensive ones. So plan ahead. Those three steps, fall risk first, entryways, and then the larger modifications you tackle at the end. Here are some modifications. They are simple to do, uh, but also I think these are probably going to be very relevant for fall risk. If you have a main bedroom and you can't move downstairs, move to the main room, right? That's a no-brainer because then you don't have to deal with steps any longer. Lower height. Most of the falls with older adults are in their bedroom. And it's usually because either going in or out for the bed. And usually because the beds are tall. And so they slip or they trying to get to the bed and they couldn't and they slip down. So if you if you can get a, a bed that is smaller or even if, if they want to use it, if they're not, they're not stubborn enough, the hospital beds is actually better because they can recline. But get a bed with a lower height grab bars and secure handrails. Now, people ask me a lot of times, oh, can I install those grab bars with suction cup? And I'm like, no, 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 no. So, so get a contractor to really install grab bars. The reason for that is there is a difference between static weight and, and, and uh, non-static weight. So for example, when you're grabbing that suction cup uh, uh, grab bars, you can probably go in and out from your shower Really, it's fine, right? Because it, it's it's sturdy enough. 
The problem is static weight is when you're falling and you're holding into that, your weight is twice or three times with the pressure that you put in that grab bar. That thing just gonna fall apart, right? Because you need grab bars. I know that you need grab bars to go in and out of the top or to your shower, but you need grab bars in case of emergency. That's the most important thing is life and death that you grab that and will not fall out, right? So, so that's the static weight when you, you need to get some, somebody um, that can really install that grab bars. Shower chair, you have tops and you don't have the means to really get a, a walk-in shower, get a shower chair. If it's still hard for you to get in out from the shower chair, use the transfer board, okay? Transfer board is easy. You put it over the shower chair. The seniors can just sit down and slide them in, to the shower chair and then have a shower. Handheld shower one, right? Move the shower down so that it's convenient and easy for them to, to take a shower uh, by themselves independently. And then on the kitchen, move, just move all the used items to the, the bottom one, right? So that they can actually reach them e easily. Remove clutters. You know, if they still have land phone and there's a lot of cables, remove that, right? So anything that is clutters, this is hard. I know one of you said, do not remove the rock in front. I think it was Kelly, I think it was your mom, right? Yeah, so you know, if you can, if you can remove, remove it. If not, secure it, right? Even when you secure the rock, some rocks are thick. And so as they walk, they they slide their feet. If you could stumble into the rocks also, um, especially also in the bathroom. So if you can remove it, remove it first. If you cannot, just properly secure it. Contain pets or remove them. Um, we've, you know, I don't know if, if anybody has seen the Amazon pets, like those robotic pets. You know they're they're you know they're they're not cheap, but they're also very useful. So if 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 your your parents still really want to do pets, maybe maybe do that instead of the real pets. Um, I know it's it's some of them are look very real, very real. Uh, manage medications. What I mean about that is um, if they take three, four, five different medications and you have them in different bottle of pills, pill bottles, that's going to be hard for them. If you can use a pharmacy to do the pill, to, to do the medication management so that it comes either in a pill box or in the, those plastic sachets that they can just do morning and night, it's easier for them to do it. So manage the medications, lighting, stairs and hallways especially are important, especially close to their bedroom, going to the bathroom. That's always the, the case for the falls. Install remote false monitoring. So technology, and we'll discuss more about technology on the next slide, but technology has come so far now that there are a lot of technology to help older adults live independently in their homes, right? It is not, it's not 100% proof, you know, as you can see, you know, if the, if your, if your parents or your loved ones don't need physical care, like somebody, you know, helping showering, this monitoring is so, so useful, okay? And then technologies like smartwatch, pendant, panic button, hear, hearing aid. Do you know that hearing aids now have fall detection? I mean, I just heard about that. I was amazed that you can have hearing aids that if you fall, it will alert 911 or it will alert somebody that somebody has fallen. Now, that's only if they use it, right? And you, how many people have parents like, oh, I don't have my hearing aid. So oh, they have to use it, right? Um, Alexa, Alexa is also very, I know I have a client where the, the, the daughter put Alexa in every room because in case that she falls, she says, Hey, Alexa call. Right. So that's also a very, very usable thing. So let's, let's look about the, let's look at technology, uh, on this and thank you to, uh, to Elizabeth for providing a lot of these examples. And I have to research all of this to make sure that I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, connected care is actually what we what we have in comfort care. So it is um, a monitoring for falls, activities, chronic diseases. So we do have that. Uh, these are very very uh, affordable. You know, it's not like it's you know when when you think about in home care, it's thirty dollars per hour, right? These are like three hundred dollars a month. So things like that can be can be done. Care alert is another one uh, that can actually have sensors. And then you just plug it in and then it will kind of try to detect the habits of your loved ones. And then if that habits change, 
it would just alert somebody, but alert you, you know, or alert some, uh, a loved one. Cameras, Arlo, Ring, Blink, easy to install, easy to install, right? Um, these are usually, if you wanna understand what they're doing in there. Uh, we have one client where the daughter wants to put the camera right in front of the bathroom. I said, no, 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 no. So I said, that's that's intrusion, right? So, so even though camera is good, think about where you put them. Right. Um, I know that falls are usually happens in two areas of the room, bedroom and bathroom. Bedroom, I think you could put cameras, bathroom, probably not, because especially for us, like our caregivers goes in the bathroom. So that's why we we went to the daughter and said, hey, don't do that. And so she she realized that. Uh, but cameras can can be uh, can be very, very useful. Air tag. So air tag, I put I put them in the suitcase, right? But think about it, if you if you block one have dementia and they are wandering, slip an air tag on their favorite shoe. Okay, and then you can create a geofence, right? As soon as she goes out from geofence, it's gonna alert you. Somebody's going out from that geofence, right? And then the difference also is the camera cannot pick up where she is after she leaves the home. You can track the air track where she is, as long as she's wearing that shoe. But but if as long as she's wearing a shoe, you know where she's gonna go. So, so you know, think about AirTag. That's a really you know genius uh, innovation there. Medication management and, and reminders, Hero Health, connected caregiver pillbox. These are things that can help you manage those medication and and dispense it at a certain time. So think about if if your mom or dad live by themselves and you you cannot you know dispense the medication, use some of these technologies. They're good. Social engagement. Um, Again, I put connect to care because we do telehealth where we call our clients, you know, once a day for 15, 20 minutes. And in most cases, the our remote care coordinators that call them become their best friend. So they talk about their children and they talk about everything else. So it's almost like a socialization in a way. So that's, you know, that's also available. Uh, LEQ, check a B, uh, that, those are also check in B. Those are also things that um, can can be used to kind of do social engagements engagement for your loved ones. And then there's entertainment. Joyful Memories is uh, music. So we have a YouTube um, channel called Joyful Memories that you can actually do for free. There's a lot of songs in different genre, um, you know, so, th so that would be free. Uh, online fitness like Team Vivo, Dementia TV, like Zinnia. There's even virtual singing, uh, singing at home where Brian actually has a lot of videos there. Right, Brian? No? Communication, Caroling 360 tablet. This is a really cool tablet. It actually replaces, you know, iPad is great, but iPad is so complicated. This is a tablet specifically for seniors. It's so easy. It can combine so, you know, um, Zoom calling to with sharing of videos, sharing of uh, photos and stuff like that. Really, really cool technology. Care coordination apps, uh, some of them with vital tracking, like My Connected Caregiver. And then simplify tasks. So this is like online grocery shopping, like Instacart, uh, Amazon uh, Prime, and things like that can be used also. So again, this, these are probably, I would say, 20% of technologies that are available out there. There's so many other technologies out there. Uh, if you have a need on technology or something, you know, reach out to us. You know, we may not know all the answers, but we may be able to find those answers because we work with a lot of the trusted, you know, people in the industry. So we will be able to find that uh, that um, answer for you. Again, this may not work for everybody, right? Meaning that if they need the care, if let's say that they're bedridden, there's technologies cannot help them, right? They have to have somebody that comes in there uh, and help them with that. Okay, what about health condition and medication? Go ahead. They are Wi-Fi, they can also be cellular. So I think they can be both, uh, but most use Wi-Fi first. And I think the reason is because there's no, if there's no Wi-Fi, is that is that the reason the question is if there's no Wi-Fi? Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, so that's a great question. So for the remote care monitoring, it's indoor only. So it's in the home. If it's outside, I would suggest having like a Apple Watch, having a pendant, right? Or having that, pendants are typically seller, yep. So pendant, now, 
the pendant that if, if your mom or dad lives in a community, the pendant usually is with for the community. But if you buy one from outside, right, it's usually seller, cellular. So they can push anywhere that they are, you know, and then they can alert the, the people. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a power power off suddenly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. 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 Well, part of that, part of that renovation at the end of phase three could also include battery backup installation. That's why that phase three will probably gonna cost between 10 to maybe $30,000 because there's a lot of things that you need to put in there, including maybe a battery backup. Um, but there are other things like the phone, hopefully phone will, will still be working for, you know, if they charge the phone, right? But there are things, I think there are battery operated that can probably last, that pendant is battery operated. So the pendant could also be used uh, in case when the power is on. So we talked about the medication management using pharmacies. I would also suggest that use one pharmacy if you can. I know that some people have different doctors, right? Because the problem with having different pharmacies is they don't talk to each other. Um, and then if, if the medications you know, are, are probably interfering with each other and causing maybe dizziness or you know, other things, if the pharmacy does not know all the medication that your mom or dad takes, um, they're not going to be able to find that. So I always suggest use one pharmacy if you can, right? So you know, evaluate the options for medication reminder, like the like the technology, for example, or you can get you know people people um, um, people to call, like the telehealth that we talked about. Check buddies. Do you have check buddies for your parents? So check buddies means that if if there is a way that you can actually get a neighbor or somebody to check in on a daily basis, right? Because that is important to know. In you know, are, are, you know, are they are they okay every day? If they don't, you know, if they don't call or even a call, like if somebody can call them, you know, once a day at the exact same moment, just to make sure. The reason for that important for that is you know disease. I mean, uh, for disease is one of them. However, falls. So, so there is a term called long lie in falls. Long lie means that how long will the person be found after a fall? The longer they are not found, the, the worse it can get in terms of the, the repercussion of the fall. So you always want to find that fall quickly, right? And so having a check buddies would be good if you can. There's also a, a case where, because um, I know it, it takes effort to do it. So there's one, um, there's one 55 plus where the neighbors, she would open the curtain at a certain time and the neighbors would see, oh, the curtain's open, so she's okay today. Okay, so even simple things like that. If you have a neighbor said, hey, can you watch? I'm gonna open my window every 11 a.m. If I don't open the window, that means something's wrong, right? So just simple thing like that, but get a check buddies. Uh, virtual calls, so we talk about that. The remote care monitoring or virtual calls. Telehealth has come a long way. So there's a lot of uh, really affordable uh, telehealth options. Meals on Wheels, if you qualify for that, you could Meals on Wheels. If not, use delivery options like Blue Apron, right? That is easy and simple enough to, to, to cook, to, to prepare and cook. Food supplement, I always tell people if don't, they don't eat a lot, and I know they probably don't eat a lot or they forgot to eat, at least get food, get supplement. Boost and ensure is really important um, and get the flavor that they want and, and you know chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry. Encourage exercise. This is important, especially for um, in the, the term use it or lose it, right? If you, your, your muscle mass on your special on your legs, your extremity is use it or lose it. Um, if they don't walk, if they don't use that, they may they may come into this vicious cycle. People that have fallen or you know heard about their families or their friends fall, they're gonna restrict activities. They're gonna sit down, they're gonna do sanitary life. And then when they want to do activities, they're gonna fall, right? And so you have to make sure that they are exercised. If they are 16 and older and they're still independent and they're mobile, 
COP Senior Center or COP Senior Services offers what they call Matter of Balance. You should check check on that. Matter of Balance is actually, you, you ask me, oh, it's all about balance? No, it's actually balancing between conquering the fears of falls and, and providing daily exercise so that the older adult can exercise you know, by themselves. It's an eight week course, um, two hours per, it can only accommodate about 12 people. We, we do it too, but we, we don't do it every time. But COP Zero Services have that uh, available also. So check matter of balance. That's, a, that's an evidence-based training program that is proven to be very effective. Get eye checkup annually. Okay, this is important as 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 they live by themselves, they need to be able to, you know, be able to to see properly, and then always recommend PT and OT, especially when they're trying to get the assistive device. Uh, don't just buy a wheelchair. Sometimes you go to a physical therapy, ocular therapy, ask them to recommend which is the best one for your mom and dad, and then teach them how to use it. Transportation and socialization, you always want to continue to encourage them to do the activities they love. If they love bingo go to bingo, right? If they like, you know, walking to the park, get them walked in the park. Understand other transportation options. If you cannot drive them, maybe do an in-home care. Now, in-home care usually have a minimum, unfortunately, either four hours to six hours. If that is if that cost is prohibitive, maybe do neighbor force. I don't know if you heard neighbor, neighbor force is, it's almost like a neighbor helping neighbor. Uh, they can, you can actually get neighbor force to take you transportation for about an hour. It costs a little bit more on an hour basis, but you can only, we, we can get them for an hour. The only uh, challenge with neighbor force is if you have personal care, they won't be able to help you because they're not licensed CNA like what we provide, right? But neighbor force for companionship, transportation can be a, can be a good thing. Think about Uber and Lyft. I know Uber may, I don't know if it's in Atlanta, but they have Uber Health too, where they actually have certified CNA to take people. I'm not sure if they're available here yet. Uh, but Uber and Lyft can be very helpful to um, evaluate home medical and other services. That's why we have Restore First Health and, and Village MD in here, because when transportation is not possible anymore, you want people to come to you, right? We also work with uh, uh, Dash Stylist. I don't know if you heard Dash Stylist. Is, is, uh, they connect uh, hairstylists around the area. So you can see hairstylists nearby to you and then you can book them. They can come to your home and they can do your hair, right? For, for male and female. Um, pharmacies, there's mobile dog groomers, there's mobile pet walkers. So look for those kind of resources as they can't go to those places anymore. Adult daycare programs. So I don't know if you know this, this community that we're here is um, allowed to aging. So they do adult daycare every Monday and Wednesday. Uh, really, really good program, all volunteer based, very affordable. But look at that. There's a lot in the area because socialization is really important for, for your loved one. Senior services. The last, If you came last month, COP and Charico Senior Service were here. They presented their, their uh, senior centers and there's a lot of activities there. And then, of course, we talk about available online resources like Silver Snickers and Team Vivo. Silver Snickers usually is included in the Medicare Advantage plan. Correct, Jerry? That's right. So we have a Medicare person here, so that's why I came to the country. But yeah, so if you have a silver sneaker, make sure you, you take advantage of them. Other recommendation. So one thing that I always tell people, always, always respect your loved one's independence. They want to be independent for a reason, right? It's it's also emotional, but they, they you know, respect them that, that they want to be independent. And whenever you make decisions, put them in your, put them in your team. Um, because the last thing they, they want is to to move because, oh, my daughter told me so. My daughter will make me want to have to move. Put them in your team because it is much easier to get them to do what you probably want, want them to do if you put them in a team. So make them part of the team and make them part of the decision making. Um, I put that in there because sometimes if they qualify other home health after uh, a hospitalization or hospice, uh, they can be very helpful because they provide that that free services because they cover Medicare. So if you know, make use of that if you have the the ability to use it. And plan ahead. It is very critical that you plan ahead. There's so many times that we actually have somebody live by themselves, and when something happens and their children don't really know if they have a power of attorney or if they have an advanced directive 
So always, always the number of things that you need to do is make sure that you've got the legal documents to make sure that when something happens that they are taken care of. You don't have to make that decision because they already made it for you. It's basically their wish. Okay. And then use the safety check. So I want to talk a little bit about, okay, so what happened if more services or more hours are needed? So when they come to me about home care, I always say, you know, think about your, the family members first, right? Friends and families, because home care can be a burden, right? Our costs about $30 an hour, approximately on average, that can add up, all right? So we always tell them, think about your family and friends and then leave the gap to in-home care, okay? Um, there are two kinds. There's in-home care, there's live-in services. Okay, in-home care, like we do, when we do a 24-hour service, we do 12 hours, two shifts. So, month, you know, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. There's also live-in services. Live-in is cheaper. <laughs> live-in means that that one caregiver sleeps and lives with your loved one three months, four months, six months. Not many home care companies provide that. You can check, call them, and ask them. The reason for that is because there's a lot of uh, labor laws that a lot of home care companies get in trouble with because they don't provide the pay that they need to be, they need to have. Um, so, but some are still providing it and they can be extremely less expensive than having a 12 hour. And plus you have one caregiver instead of, you know, for us, we have to give three caregivers in the morning shift and three at night, right? And so you have six people rotating instead of one. Okay, so live in service. Agency versus private caregivers. I have seen so many great private caregivers, so do I, don't get me wrong. Uh, the issue, the challenge that you will have is, do you know who they are, right? As you, so when you when you want to get a private caregiver, make sure you do the vetting very carefully. Check references. If you can do background checks, you, you do it, right? Because it, with an agency like us, we do all that. We have the insurance, we have the liability, we have the workers' comp, so we cover that. Uh, but private caregivers can also be very good. Uh, check SOAR. There's a... Facebook group called SOAR, S-O-A-R. Um, sometimes, you know, if you want to ask questions, you just ask them, hey, do you, ha do you have options for uh, private caregivers? They usually have a lot of options there, uh, but then still check the references. Check people that they have served and see what how they do. Consider payment sources. Most of the time, the payment for in-home care will be private pay, so out of pocket. Uh, VA benefit can provide in-home care, um, long-term care insurance can provide in-home care, and then Medicaid. Okay, so check with with how you you know what what you're available. Check on those payment sources. Again, consider hospice care. Uh, if you need more care at this point of time, I think hospice care is is really beneficial. And then troubleshoot factors too. So I always say, like sometimes you know people come to me and like, oh, I need twenty four seven. I always ask so. So does your mom sleep all, uh, through the night? No, because she wakes up uh, two or three times a night to go to the bathroom. Okay, then I ask them, so have you, what What does she use? Does she use brief? She said, yeah, she used the pets. Okay. What about changing it to a better product? Like we we recommend Seni. It's a European product, but it's it's much more durable than, than uh, the pets. Sometimes that can help you. Right. If if you can make your loved one sleep through the night and not wake up and go to the bathroom, maybe you don't need the night shift. Maybe you only need the, the morning shift. Right. Seni, S-E-N-I. So um, Amazon sells them. Um, all of the local pharmacies, you, CVS and, and Walgreens don't sell them. But if you go to Lacey's in Ackworth or any of the, you know, mom and pop pharmacy, they sell that Seni. They're about 15% more expensive, it depends, but they're good. So if you want the overnight one, get the overnight uh, heavy duty one. They are, they're available in brief and also pull-ups. So you're welcome. And then what happened if, you know, you, you time to have that conversation, right? So when, when the time comes, when there's complex medication needs, when there's frequent falls, when there are dementia progression, chronic diseases, Financial constraint, right? Again, because it's private pay. Um, one thing is, if you can wait till June, our topic is the how to have difficult conversation with aging parents for that. If not, get trusted industry experts. Talk to us. If you have that. Sometimes, you know, when, when that happens, like driving, for example, right? Talk to your doctor. Let the doctor make that call and inform 
your your loved ones, right? Or talk to us. We could come in there and like Kelly, you know, could come in there and say, I think you need to move to a community. They sometimes hear us more than they hear the children, right? My mom does that too. She doesn't hear from me at all. So sometimes use the authority like people um, to help you to do that. And lastly, this, if you want to take photos, these are just only some of the resources that we can find um, that you can that you can use to help. Uh, there's probably more than this. And if again, if you can't find it, we'll we'll find it for you. So, so our next meeting. So these are all for the family caregivers, by the way. So Elizabeth Miller will be our guest speaker next week, and she, that's going to be powerful next month. So juggling work, home, and caregiving. So Thursday, April 18, twenty twenty four. Uh, 630. So thank you very much for coming again. And again, our sponsor will be out there if you have any questions and I hope I'll, we'll see you again next month. Thank you.